Hi everyone, my name is Max Patton. Pardon the wind chimes, I'm recording outside because I can, why not? It's a beautiful day out here in Colorado. And I am making another video about the Apple Watch Ultra and a very specific part of the Apple Watch Ultra experience. You might have seen my last video where I ranted a lot about features that were just missing on the Apple Watch Ultra. One of the biggest ones for me as a cyclist and someone who likes to run and you know find routes is just the lack of any kind of offline navigation or frankly route planning at all built into the Apple Watch as compared to competitors from Garmin, Coros, Polar, and the like. Well, Apple has not changed much, but there is a lovely app that I found out about um, courtesy of a developer who emailed me called Footpath. And this is not a sponsored video in any way. I will disclose that he gave me a subscription to the app for a year. It was $15 for free, but that's all it. He didn't t tell me to say anything. These are my honest opinions. I've discovered this app now and used it for a bit. I'm about to use it for a bike ride today, but I want to tell you all about it. So what is Footpath? Well, uh, you might be familiar with just third-party apps on the Apple Watch like Workout Doors, which I really like. They're great. They track workouts like Nordic skiing or kayaking so much better than the built-in Apple workouts because they actually record GPS data. They give you a map of where you're going, uh, just more functional screens, etc. Well, this app Footpath is sort of in the vein of Workout Doors. It's a power user app, right? It's meant for those of us who want to go beyond the built-in functionality and it does it really well. So basically it's this map that I, as I understand, is based off a service called OpenStreetMap the developers can use. And I think there's some additional layers on to it for weather, road cycling, etc. But basically it's a map that you can customize to draw routes on. Sort of like if you're familiar with Strava, they have an interface for this. But Footpath is sort of a great all-in-one solution for the Apple ecosystem for doing this. Because on Strava, um, if you pay for Strava Premium, which is its own now quite a substantially priced subscription, uh, you can draw your own routes, basically. Let's say you want to draw a route for road cycling or trail running or mountain biking or um, cross-country skiing or what have you. You can do that on Strava uh, and it'll snap to the map. Footpath does the same thing, but I think the interface is delightful um, and the subscription is frankly cheaper than Strava. And it just does this one thing. It's a single purpose app that just helps you route. And then once you snap to map, you let's say draw a loop or you draw an out and back, the app will then let you have a cue sheet that it just generates that tells you all your turns, upcoming navigation prompts. And then here's the kicker and where the Apple Watch Ultra comes in, the developer has an amazing Apple Watch app that has so much good native integration. So it's one of those Apple Watch apps that works brilliantly with the always on display. It'll actually display your next turn or whatever you want to customize onto the always on display. Unlike Workout Doors, which hasn't been updated to use Swift UI yet, um, which is required by apps to enable that. So it's a really well designed app. The interface is great. And importantly, it lets you download offline maps to the Apple Watch. This for me is huge because it means that if you're in a cellular dead zone, uh, it's connected and as capable of a device as the Apple Watch Ultra is, sometimes you're screwed if you're you know without cellular. Well, no longer because you can download those offline maps, not only to your phone, but to the Apple Watch. And it's super easy to basically plan the routes on your phone, you draw it with the tool, and then you just send it to the Apple Watch and it transfers pretty quickly. And I'm gonna about to do that for my road uh, route now. It's a 40 mile bike ride I have planned, uh, should be really fun. So I'll show you the app interface in a second, but I just wanna kind of talk about how awesome this is as a feature. I'm so glad this exists. I'm so glad this developer reached out to me and I can't wait to kind of stress test the app today uh, for a long bike ride um, using you know the Apple Watch in lieu of something like a bike computer. Obviously a smartwatch is never gonna be as ideal for that, but I do think it's long time the Apple Watch has had functionality like this. Now I will say Work Outdoors does let you import GPX routes um, from Strava or other places, but the workflow for doing that on an iPhone uh, partially for Apple limitations and partially just because of the way these apps are designed, it's kind of clunky. The beauty of this Footpath app is it's all integrated. You just draw it right you, on the map, it snaps to your sport, you choose road cycling or whichever sport you're doing, there's a lot of options on it. Uh, and then it'll just generate that route for you. It's super seamless, you don't have to move files around anywhere, import them to different apps, it's all one workflow. Uh, and then the app just works beautifully. Now, one thing I do wish is that there was a Mac app because I love planning my routes on a big screen. If I could do that on my you know uh, studio display at home or on my Mac screen that'd be great um, I have to do it on my phone which you know is a nice screen but it's not that big uh, so that's always been my nitpick also with Strava and their map planning where you know it's great on the desktop but they don't let you do the cool snap to map thing 
let me like click and drag. I don't know. Maybe that's a suggestion for the developer if they want another platform to target. So overall, just a really cool experience that Footpath provides for a pretty modestly priced subscription. Like I said, I believe it is, I'll fact check this with text in the video, but $15 a year if you do pay for it. So cheaper than Strava, which is now running $60 plus. Uh, and of course you still can use Strava without the premium mapping features because you can use an app like this instead. All right, let's take a look at the app interface. So here's my phone pulled up. And what I have is basically the app currently just on the map screen, which is the main functionality of this app, right? It's all about mapping and route planning. So if I just pinch to zoom out, you can see, right? I can basically see all around here on the front range of Colorado. I select my sport up here. Now let's say, of course, I wanna search for a place of interest. You can do that. So I, let's say I wanted to look for like Chautauqua uh, Trailhead and I wanted to start there. Now the map's gonna snap me there or take me there. Uh, and I select my sport. So in this case, I'm doing biking, but of course you could do a lot of other sports. There's many built into this app. I'm not sure how much customization and tweaking there is, like in terms of how much the app changes based off which sport you're doing, if the routing is much different, but um, that functionality is there to at least choose what you're doing. Like I assume if you choose gravel cycling, it'll show you more gravel paths, likewise for um, you know, cross country skiing or uh, mountaineering, of course, that will show you trails and maps as well. So a lot of just offline terrain maps built in, topography is all here. I think it'll also show snow conditions, which is relevant for, you know, all of those winter sports. Super nice to see. Now, when I want to start drawing a route, I hit this pencil and I can toggle off or on this magnet thing. So right now I have it toggled on because I think that's what's nice about this app. You start the pencil and let's say I start a um, you know what, we're not gonna do road cycling. We're gonna do a um, hiking route around Chautauqua. So I'll switch my sport to that. You can also choose your map styles. There's a bunch of different kind of overlays that are built in. If you want like more of a satellite view, this app has that. I'll stick with the defaults. So I'm just gonna start drawing it around here. So uh, this is gonna be a little chaotic, pardon me, but I will just um, basically start swiping to draw um, and just, I don't know what the app will do, but I just drew a circle. It's gonna figure something out. So it figured out an out and back from that. I think a lot of where I was drawing the circle was inaccessible terrain. So obviously the app is smart enough to figure out what's a road, what's a path and snap you there. Then you can choose basically, do you wanna, with that point you made loop it? Do you wanna make it an out and back, etc.? cetera? Uh, you can set your start points. You can keep drawing additional stuff. So um, you can just, you know, basically make all kinds of routes. Now this is a terrible route that I'm making, but this is just uh, for demonstration purposes. So please excuse that. Uh, but basically, yeah, you can just keep on doing that. So that's how you plan routes. Now I've already made a route. So I'm gonna show you the route I'm doing today. I'm gonna go into this hamburger menu and you can see routes that you made. So I made a running route that I was testing with this app previously in my neighborhood. Uh, and then I'm gonna do this one right now for road cycling. So here we go. I basically, I drew a shape like this and the app was smart enough to snap all the points. It tells me the elevation profile of what I'm about to do. Super useful for athletics. You wanna know how much you're climbing. Then you go to your cue sheet. That'll tell you all of the turns you're making. Um, super useful. And here's where the money part comes in. So you can start navigation on the phone or you can send to watch. So I'm gonna send this route to my watch uh, and now it's actually, I'm gonna show you what it does on my Apple Watch Ultra. So it's basically, if I can focus the camera, it is now going to download onto my Apple Watch Ultra. Uh, so <laughs> I've got uh, basically an estimate of how long that route's gonna take me. It's looking like somewhere around the neighborhood of three hours. Um, and it you know has my route name. I can organize my routes with different lists uh, and then I can, once it's downloaded, I believe basically see a lot of things. So let me make sure my watch is in the focus zone of the camera and show you what that looks like. So here's the map view uh, of what I'm gonna do. I can just zoom with the digital crown. The interface is one of the more responsive I found from a third party mapping app or any app, honestly. It's just such a good interface. I think the developer did a really good job polishing this app. It's just superb. So here I am, you can zoom out all the way. But yeah, so it's downloading. It'll let me know its status. Looks like it's offline ready. So now I can set off in <laughs> to my ride and have a good time. Uh, and then of course you can even customize your settings on the watch. So things like which 
way you're orienting with north and all that. You can even, and this is really cool, use with another workout app. So let's say you wanna use this for directions, but you use Strava or you use the native workouts app or use workout doors or something else to track the workout because you prefer that interface, you can do that. And I've tested that with the workouts app with a run, this app runs in the background beautifully. And let's say you're wearing Bluetooth headphones, it'll send those navigation prompts to your headphones even while you're in the other app. That's the power of the Apple Watch being you know, a 64-bit um, multi-core processor. Like this is so powerful compared to a Garmin device. And I wish Apple took more advantage of that with a built-in software, but you kind of have to rely on third-party apps like this to do such th things. Um, by the way, I'm also gonna enable basic GPS recording. That's an option you have. If you don't wanna route, you can just track with this app as well. But going back to that, I'm gonna hit start and you can see what it looks like. It'll show you your tracking metrics. Um, it just use the Apple Watch speaker there, but it would use headphones if you had those connected. Um, so yeah, you can use the digital crown to scroll between these views. It shows helpful things like your elevation. Um, and if you swipe between, I think it'll also show you, yeah, the, basically where you have to orient, super cool, um, then your music as well. So overall, I really like the interface of this app, dead simple, uh, I'm gonna end that recording. But yeah, that is the interface both on the phone and the Apple Watch Ultra. I would say that this is a super, super solid app. We're just gonna track the workout through this app uh, and record it and I'll let you know how it goes. Damn headwind ever. They told me to get on Highland Drive, which is this just muddy road that becomes ice. The back road, maybe in summer it's fine for a road bike, but certainly not in winter. So, more of a trail of a gravel thing, really. So, maybe this app or the map source is using the road distinguishments between paved and unpaved, uh, or at least in this situation, this is just pure mud. So, I'm getting back on the highway. On this winter ride, we've encountered basically everything that is not fun about winter. Mud, uh, bike paths with snow, confusing directions. Mostly not really the footpaths out fall, just, you know, uh, snowy trails and having to arrange all that and all that. Uh, headwinds too. So, you know, the elements are not in my favor today. Bike is messy, so I ended up going on a muddy path, uh, which was sort of footpaths fault, but uh, I was able to reroute pretty quickly and it adjusted. So now we're doing the climb and back. But oh my gosh, winter weather. It's real. I hope you can hear me. It's so, so freaking windy. Muddy, it's winter, that's what happens. But uh, did successfully record with the footpath, so I'm gonna show those results now and uh, conclude this video up. Also, I'm hosing this down, hosing the cleats down, everything got so caked, like I could barely clip it at the end. Not related to the app, but uh, winter riding, just you know, exercise caution. Alrighty, that was um, footpaths. So, really good app, I'm super impressed. Again, not sponsored, I'll link it in the description, but I have no affiliate relationship with the developer. He just gave it to me for free for a year, but I'll probably keep paying for it. I really liked how it worked today. So I would not say Footpaths is a replacement for dedicated um, adventure terrain maps like Gaia GPS, Onyx, um, things like that. 
Uh, I'm sure you could use it for things like backcountry skiing and um, you know off-road stuff, but based on my experience using it for road cycling, it did lead me astray a little bit sometimes on roads that were muddy and just not great in the winter. Now that's not exclusively this app's issue. Of course, it's using external data sources. No one developer can build all of their own maps. I've had the same issues with Strava's auto routing. Uh, so the fact that this, you know, small developer is competing with a company the size of Strava with a cheaper price, I think is pretty compelling. That's the benefit of third-party apps uh, or indie developers is that you know you can target a really specific use case and just address it so well. Uh, and this one app, I think, yeah, competes with the Strava routing, um, is almost on par with the Garmin routing. Uh, and so in that way, it elevates the whole Apple Watch experience, whether or not you have an Ultra. But I do think it is really well suited to the Ultra. It makes amazing use of the action button, the always on display. I mean, I have to keep, this is an Apple praise thing, but I love the always on uh, just the screen on the Apple Watch Ultra. It's so bright. It's like, I mean, it's always been amazing. Uh, and so for that reason, I like that this app takes advantage of it. It like really has an interface that stretches out for that full screen. It lets you see a lot of data at once. You can record your workout like I did today with the app itself or use an external workout app like Workout Doors, another great third-party Apple Watch app, um, or even Apple's native workouts app. The developer, like this developer, I feel like has thought of so many things that just like, um, it lets you do everything <laughs> and I really like it. So for its single small purpose of helping you route and kind of navigate uh, on adventures, which I think everyone should do, not just Apple Watch Ultra owners, but all of us, you know, let's have be fit, stay safe, but have fun outside. This app is really good. It really does elevate the Apple Watch Ultra experience for me. I don't know if it, you know, alleviates all of my complaints that I had in my last video about this not stacking up to a Garmin device. And um, no wristwatch is gonna be a replacement for like a dedicated bike computer, say, which I think is gonna be more ergonomic to see than looking at your wrist. But navigating today, this worked pretty well by and large. Even when I did go off route or went on a weird road or wanted to modify something, I could easily you know, use that big, beautiful screen on the Ultra to just zoom out a little bit on the digital crown and pan around the map and see where I was supposed to go, uh, even while on the bike. So super good interface. Um, also, shout out to uh, AirPods Pro, not related to the app, but I just got some new AirPods Pro and the transparency mode on those. In my opinion, now everyone's different about this, I get that safety is personal, but in my opinion, they are safe headphones to wear on the bike because their adaptive transparency mode where they pass through the audio or what's around you is really good. I had awareness of cars around me even when I was busy roads, and yet I could still hear my music. So, um, and the prompts from this app, which is what's the relevant thing here. This app will send you voice prompts that are honestly really descriptive. It would say like, cross the street uh, and then turn right or go f stay on this bridge and then follow left. Whenever you get into dense urban bike paths and environments like that, navigation's always tricky, but this app of the ones I've used is basically the best. If you know of a better one, let me know, but really, really great prompts um, and uh, basically uh, Bluetooth directions set to my headphones that just kind of nicely, you know, would uh, duck down my music, play the prompt, then my music would play again. So really not intrusive, worked super well. Uh, and you don't even have to listen to music. I totally get it if you're not into that for safety. Even if you just had your headphones like AirPods in transparency mode and use them for the voice prompts in this app, that's great. It can use the Apple Watch Ultra speaker, but when it's windy and you're on the bike, maybe you won't hear that as well. So that's just kind of my advice on the note of voice prompts, which I think extends the utility of this so much because on a bike, uh, maybe in other sports too, like maybe types of skiing where you're wearing thick gloves, you can't always look at your wrist easily. So when you have wireless headphones and you have great integration, like uh, with this app, the voice prompts are cool. So I think urban, you know, cyclists or adventurers or people in areas that have good maps but need offline functionality and want smarter routing, like, you know, here where I live in Colorado in the Front Range or maybe the Bay Area in California. Um, you know, this is very US centric, but um, areas, you know what I'm talking about, areas with outdoorsy scenes that are also somewhat developed and urban and uh, dense that, you know, have good maps, this app's great for. I don't know if it would be great for Moab and all that other stuff. Maybe it is, I don't know. But uh, to my knowledge, it's not using any super high-end HD uh, backcountry maps, but there are other dedicated apps and services for that. And if I do find that any of uh, what I've said is wrong in this video, I'll correct it with a comment in um, with a comment below. So do let me know what you think of um, 
this app if you try it out. Stay safe, have fun out there, and uh, go on adventures with your watch, regardless of what it is. I don't care if it's an Apple Watch or a Garmin, but, or a Polar, who knows, but go have adventures. And uh, see you next time.